We're at the part of the pattern in the mitten where it starts to decrease in order to make this triangle where the fingers fit. And decreasing is pretty easy, but I wanted to show how to do that. So at the pattern, I did this last row that's the final row that doesn't have any decreases. And then we're gonna go to the next row. And the way these patterns typically work is there's going to be, you don't do any decreases on these bands. And this creates this border here. The decreases happen, that's my dog. He's carrying his bone around and whining. <laughs> but it shows, um, this is where you're going to do the decreases after you do this band. So, Life is so hard when you're a dog. Okay, so we're gonna do the band first. And then to decrease, I'm just going to pick up this first stitch and put it in or put the second stitch into it and then put it back on and then I'm going to start following the pattern okay then when we get to the other end here before this other band we need to decrease as well so we have two stitches left and only one stitch on the pattern so we're gonna do the same thing, just pull one stitch through the other stitch, and then finish the pattern like that. Now, there are other ways to combine stitches and decrease and all of that. This is, this is just how I do it. So if you have another way that you've learned to decrease, then go ahead and use that. The idea is that you just, at the end of each row, you want to combine two stitches. So we're at the end of the row here. So we're gonna combine these two stitches. And then continue with the pattern that's on the palm. Okay, and again, on the end of this row, we're going to combine these two stitches just by looping one through the other and then just do one knit there. And what you get with this method is kind of this little knotted detail. And I actually kind of like that. It, you know, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste. Again, there are different ways that you can combine the stitches, but for me, this is just easy. And, um, and I kind of like that little, almost like a little braid that it puts along the top edge. And I definitely prefer the mitten patterns that have a band like this that continues to run up the side. So that's why the pattern looks kind of strange. Like when I first saw the pattern, I was really confused, but it's because the decreases keep happening here and this remains the same. I am on my final three rows and I just wanted to show you it does start, as you decrease, it does start getting a little, I don't know, maybe hard to work so few stitches across so many needles. So I will start to um, consolidate those a little bit. I'm actually on my last two rows and we still have these edges running up. So we start with those. I think I'm gonna just work across this. Just drop that needle. Okay, and then we're on the last row and 
really don't need a pattern for this. We just sort of continue to decrease, continue the side pattern here. decrease one more time down to three stitches. Basically do decrease one stitch and then decrease. So now that we are done with the pattern, I'm going to cut off the yarn, leaving enough of a tail so that we can tie it in. And then what I want to do is consolidate all of these stitches that are left. So now I have the stitches consolidated onto two needles and I have the edge on each on the side and then the three stitches in the middle. I'm going to thread both of these bits of yarn onto a large blunt tapestry needle and put them through. So I'm starting at this edge border and putting these through these three loops first. Careful not to catch it on the other needle. Okay, and then I'm going to alternate This is how I'm gonna bind off the top. And most of this is gonna get kind of tucked down into the glove. So after going back and forth between the three, the top three uh, stitches on the mitten, then I'm left last with this band. Oops. A sort of detailed edging. So I'm going to go through each of those loops.
So all of those loops are gathered together. And then we're going to bring this down inside the mitten. So I'm gonna turn it inside out. I'm gonna put this right in the middle there, right there. And then pull it through the other side. And then just weave in these ends. I'm just sort of weaving back and forth and then I'll knot it off. And there is the top of the mitten. So what we're left with now, first of all, we have these tails from the cuff. And if you did have to change out colors, which I did, then you might have some tails hanging out in other parts of the glove. So I'm gonna take a minute and just weave those in so that they're not getting in my way. Uh, I'll often loosely tie them together so that they don't, they kind of stay put. So I'm just gonna untie this. This is where I ran out of the cream thread. So since these are close together, I'm just gonna tie them together just to make one continuous piece. And then just cut it off. I, I mean, I'm sure that there are other ways to do this, like weave parts in and stuff, but I'm just gonna do that. So that one's done. And then I'll get these tails. You can see I tied these all together. Since these are a little bit further apart, I'm gonna weave this one up the cuff a little bit. Just gonna kind of follow up the cuff uh, where the sort of braided pattern is. You can wait until you're all done with the mitten to weave in the ends. I just kind of like to get them out of my way. So now that these two are close together, I'm just going to tie them together and cut them off. To do the thumb, we are going to refer to this thumb pattern. So whatever your thumb pattern is, that's what you're going to start following at this point. The principle is going to be the same no matter what your pattern is. So this is where we left a hole for the thumb, which you can see here. And we have some like uh, floats, yarn floats, running around that hole. So we, we wanna kind of tuck those under and try to ignore those. And then we set aside, how many stitches? 20, so we wanna have 20 stitches according to this pattern. There are 20 stitches that we cast on here. So we wanna try to pick those stitches up. And sometimes there's gonna be an obvious place where you pick up a stitch. You just have to kind of do your best with it. So we'll do one. So we have 20 loops on there that we can start working into. And then we wanna get this onto needles as well. And I'm gonna put this onto two needles. I find it's easier to work off of three or four needles because if you only are working off of two, then they can kind of press tightly together. If you work off of three or four, then you can create kind of this, you know, a triangle or a square that will provide some separation. What I'm gonna do is count across and figure out where I want to start so that this pattern 
lines up nicely with what I have going on here. So let's see, we've got one, two, three. Okay, so this is actually 44 across. So right now we have 20 stitches. So, or 20 stitches on one side, 20 on the other. So we only have, or sorry, we actually, yeah, let's see, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have 19 on this side and 20 on this side. So we need to add in four more stitches, five more stitches. So we're going to just pick them up where we can, just little loops. So there's one. Okay, so we're gonna have 11 on each needle. So let's see how many we have here. So now we have the thumb set up and it looks a bit of a mess, especially on this side, but it will work out. This is a little bit tight for this first row, but once you get going, then it loosens up and it's fine. So we're gonna pull our two colors out and we'll start the pattern. So the pattern's the same on both sides, but what we wanna look out for is how we want these to line up. So, so I'm actually to start, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over. So this is just a matter of kind of figuring out what's gonna work best with the pattern. And I think for the pattern, I would like to start it here. And that's just kind of how I'm choosing to do it. Put that down in there, and then we're just going to start knitting. Let it come together. Nope, that did not line up. So let's try that again. So I'm going to move one more stitch over to this needle. Okay, that should line up now. So let's try that again. It's all about getting that center point of the pattern to line up with the center point of the pattern that's on the body of the mitten. Because if that's off, that's what's gonna look weird. If the sides are off, I mean, that's fine. It's just that center pattern that you want to line up.
as I'm going through, these are kind of, it's just a tricky little spot. I have two threads that are sort of, or two pieces of yarn, they're sort of running together and I'm trying to separate them out. Again, this is, this is the hardest part right here. It's probably one of the hardest parts of the mitten. You just have to work slowly, think through it. It's not, it's not hard as far as like just doing it. It's hard when it comes to sort of thinking through, making sure you're not dropping any stitches, stopping and counting if you need to. Once this pattern is established though, this just gets a lot easier. It's this first row, it's just annoying. <laughs> Okay, hardest part is done. We have the pattern on the thumb established. We've got all of the stitches picked up. And this is a good time just to look through here. 
make sure you're happy with how this is. There are times I've gone through this and then like I have a big loop sticking out or something. So it's a good time to just make sure you're happy with how everything is lining up, which I am. So now I can go on to the second row of the thumb. And this row is gonna be so much easier because you're just working into traditional stitches. So I'm going to do a decrease here. I need to put this pattern up. It is important to have the tape in the right spot. I didn't move the tape up, so I thought that something with the pattern wasn't quite... Well, it wasn't lining up because I was doing the same row twice. Right, this is another place that we need to do a decrease. So I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to put a couple of these stitches over onto this needle so that I have all of that edge pattern on one side. Helps me to see it a little bit clearer. Then we're going to decrease here. And that's the last decrease we need to do for the thumb. There were only four until we get to the top. Now this is where I would have decreased one more stitch here, but I actually did something weird on the last row. I'm not sure what I did, but I'm not too concerned about it because it's going to be hidden under the thumb. It's not going to be noticeable at all. And um, I have the pattern right now, so I'm just going to keep it as is and just improv a little bit on that row. So I'm going to keep moving my tape up, keep working these rows, remembering this is not actually a stitch, that's just a space that I don't need to worry about. Um, most patterns for thumbs look more like this. This one just happened to have that little decrease there. But I'm gonna continue to move the tape up and use this edging as sort of a guide of which row I'm on. And then once we get up here, we're going to decrease exactly the way we did at the top of the mitten. It's exactly the same, just on a smaller scale. But I will, when I get to the top of the thumb, I'll go ahead and finish those last few rows so we can finish this mitten together. I worked on the thumb one evening while just watching a movie. And so now I'm ready to finish up. The row that I'm on right now is the third to the last row. So I'm going to keep decreasing. And I have decreased down to three needles because four needles was just a little bit too much to have to deal with. All right, and now we're on the last row. And the last row is on predominantly whites. So I'm just gonna cut this off of the skein or the ball. I don't really need that. Just go ahead and pull that needle out as well.
So you can see finishing off the top here is basically it's identical to finishing off the top of the mitten. And we're going to take care of the end in the same way as well. I just thought we've worked on this whole mitten together. So let's just go ahead and finish it off together. It feels a little unfinished if we just stop where we attach the thumb. Okay, we can cut these off even more. And we need to get the blunt tapestry needle out again and we're going to weave the ends in. We'll kind of stitch this in some again. We want to make sure, especially that the thumb and the top of the fingers, those closures, we want to make sure those are nice and tight so you don't end up with a thumb poking out in a few years. And then we want to find where the threads are where we started the thumb, which is right here. And as I did with the other ends, I'm going to go ahead and just tie those together, cut them off, and here is your mitten. And you can just use them like this, or you can block them first by wetting them and either pinning them in place or just sort of stretching them out in place. It just helps them to hold their shape better Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It just depends. I think blocking in general is a good practice for when you're knitting, but I don't know. I don't always do it. <laughs> just depends on the time I have. So there you go. Now, when you're going to start the second mitten, the cuff is going to be exactly the same. But when you get to the pattern, so we were working from right to left, or left to right, which is the natural way for us to do it since that's how we read. For the second glove, you need to work from right to left. That is the way that you're going to get a matching pair of mittens instead of two mittens that are identical, which is not what you want because we have matching hands, not identical hands. So make sure you do it that way. I have missed that before and I end up just making two pairs of mittens. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and just best of luck to you. Don't be intimidated by this. I'm still a fairly beginner knitter. I'm sure people who are more experienced than I am can see all of my mistakes and everything, but it's not about making a perfect mitten. It's about you making your own mitten. That's what the point is. So don't worry if it's not perfect and um, don't be intimidated by a project like this.